This video is sponsored by the MEDC. For the better part of two decades, whenever I heard of Michigan or Detroit, the first thing that came to mind was the fluke of the Pistons beating the Lakers in 2004 NBA Finals. But once I mentally got past that, it's always cars. It's cars, cars, cars. Detroit is the birthplace of the automobile, and the state of Michigan is sort of where the horseless carriage started. Uh, in fact, I had a chance to see the very first automobile, the very first car with an internal combustion engine. It is this guy. It's called the Quadricycle. And sort of that innocuous looking thing started an entire revolution for the world. We owe a lot of that to the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit. The state is looking to have lightning strike twice. They want to be known for being an alternate to Silicon Valley for innovation and ideas. I had a chance to check out all of these things on a pretty epic trip to the state of Michigan. Let me tell you about it. And before I get to all of that stuff and the story, I do want to do my favorite part of videos for now a couple years. Give you guys a chance to win 500 bucks for being awesome, for supporting me, supporting the channel, and watching kind of these epic videos that we've been trying to do. All you got to do, first give the video a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite EV is. Tell me a dad joke. Tell me a random Michigan fact. Sure to leave your social handle in the comments so we can let you know uh, if you win. Let it run for 10 days. All information will be in the description. So Michigan Economic Development Corporation, in partnership with the big automakers, I'm talking about Ford and GM, wanted to send us on an EV road trip across Michigan to a bunch of different cities sort of to show that it's sustainable to drive EVs sort of throughout the beautiful state of Michigan. So the first car they let us do that in is the F-150 Lightning, and this one was the geeked up Platinum. So I was obviously pretty excited to check out this truck, and I couldn't think of a better place to experience what the Lightning could do than well, where the Lightning was built in the city of Detroit. This is where cars and wheels really first hit the road. And Michigan and the automotive industry that's here is at the sort of the forefront of obviously cars, uh, but also now at the forefront of EVs. And sort of rethinking Michigan as sort of the center of the internal combustion world, thinking it is starting to be, you know, one of the big hubs of the electric automotive world. And that's really what this drive is all about. But my first time really getting a chance to see everything in Michigan, uh, but also check out and sort of test sort of how easy it is to drive an electric vehicle that was sort of born uh, in the state, actually about two miles away from, uh, from where we're going. So obviously the thing that makes electric cars really work and, and go is batteries. Having the batteries is awesome and helpful, but obviously you gotta be able to charge them. I think that's been a big holdup for a lot of people. And the state of Michigan is doing an incredible job of putting in chargers, making finding a charger ultimately be as easy as finding a gas station where you don't have to think about it anymore. You just know one's gonna be there. You can just go on your way for, for DC fast charging, um, level two charging. They are really making an effort to make sure it's going to be there for you and Michigan is gonna sort of lead that charge. We had a bunch of options of things we could do. There were hikes, there were some sort of nature things we could check out. Uh, we also had the choice to go look at the Henry Ford Museum. We want to sort of frame it, sort of where Michigan is going. That was important to know where Michigan has been. I think Henry Ford himself is definitely a controversial historical figure, but his contribution to the world is still there. So this museum we decided to go to, it's not just like Ford stuff, it is like everything that he collected and things that are sort of important from the world of automotive. And there were things here that I had never seen in my entire life. And I went really to see this. This is the Quadricycle and it's being powered by the first internal combustion engine ever. And they call it the kitchen sink because Henry Ford built the thing inside of a kitchen sink at first with his wife to try to put it all together. They, story goes uh, that he put the pieces together actually inside uh, of a sink. Then his wife <laughs> dumped fuel uh, inside of an intake and he ran the crank and it actually hummed to life. And they took that and put that inside of the quadricycle. And it wasn't a car, it wasn't an automobile, it was a horseless carriage. And that was sort of what started this process. And people in Europe and the US were competing to try to make this first horseless carriage and Ford was the first one to do it. That obviously jump-started a bunch of things. We had a chance to take a look uh, at a Model T, which I have never seen in red. There was an old joke about the Model T, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. So it's pretty cool seeing one uh, in red. We had a chance to see a bunch of historical things too. Uh, we saw the actual bus uh, that Rosa Parks sort of made her famous stand in, refused to sit in the back and give up her seat. Uh, the actual bus there from the Montgomery bus line was really cool to see. And it was a bunch of really cool stuff. As a automotive guy and historical geek, it was sort of the one chance to actually get a chance to see all of these things. And we probably saw like a fraction uh, of the stuff that was there, but it was pretty awesome to take a look at. If you're ever 
in Detroit area, I would make that 100% a place to go check out. So we only had a short time with the F-150 Lightning, which was uh, a bit of a bummer. But the positive side of that, we got to trade in the Lightning for another car I'd never driven, uh, and that was the Mustang Mach-E. And that car ultimately took us to one of the most historical things uh, in the Detroit area. Uh, and that is Michigan Central Station. Now, not being from Michigan, I did not know the importance of that. Uh, but that is where most immigrants, people who came to Detroit, came through. The train station was actually a bunch of different buildings. One area off to the side was a former book depository. That is where Ford, the state of Michigan, city of Detroit, decided to build perhaps one of the most epic startup incubators that I've ever seen. And I've made a lot of trips to Silicon Valley. I've seen those incubators and they are incredible. I had never seen something of this scale. So we got a chance to hear Bill Ford speak and Detroit innovators like Natalie King talk about what this whole thing means to them. So this, is New Lab. And Bill Ford said he wants this to be thought of as the, the new Silicon Valley. Well, at first, that might seem crazy when you see the commitment that Ford, Chevy, and the state have to building this. It starts to seem much less far-fetched, but you could feel the passion that was there. You could tangibly almost see it uh, when you walked around the space. Uh, we heard the Lieutenant Governor of Michigan speak about their hopes for the future of Detroit, hope for the future of New Lab, and all that was awesome to hear, but then we actually got to see some of the tech that's happening uh, here. So I got to check out a chess playing robot. They had new types of drones that I had never seen. They had mapping technology there, they had cameras, robots, uh, everything autonomous. You can see the stuff that's going to come from here. And you might not see sort of the, the fruits of this tree being planted for maybe five, 10, 15 years or even longer, but these are gonna be really strong roots. This is a place where startups are going to want to be, where entrepreneurs are gonna to wanna to be, where engineers are going to wanna to be because the companies that can help them are there. It is well-funded, it looks absolutely incredible. And we're gonna start hearing a lot about New Lab over the coming years. But it ended there, it would've been pretty awesome, but we are not done. Uh, the next morning, it was time to leave Detroit, uh, sadly drop off our Mach-E, uh, and get into a Chevy Bolt EUV to head over to Grand Rapids. I guess it was a fitting capstone to the Chevy Bolt EUV. We actually got the car the day after General Motors announced that they were uh, kind of sunsetting the Bolt EUV line. While the Bolt line is ending, it's gonna be in full production until the end of the year, but the spirit of the Bolt will live on. Uh, as GM moves on to more EVs based on its Ultium platform. So things like the Silverado EV, the Blazer EV, which I actually did a whole video on earlier in the year. It's a pretty awesome SUV. Uh, and the Equinox SUV uh, coming later this fall. It was a fun farewell, uh, I think, to the, the Bolt line in general. And we got in that car, we headed on over to Grand Rapids. Well, we are in a Chevy Bolt. Uh, this one's got a range of telling us a max range of about 205 miles. Now, I've, I've been driving an EV for 10 years. EV road trips don't phase me at all. But for a lot of people, it's a very new thing. Actually, our, uh, when we pulled out the car from the hotel in Detroit, the, the gentleman at the LA was asking about EV. What's it like to drive an EV? It seems interesting. Um, you know, you gotta make sure you got enough charge before you're going anywhere. And I think that's a perception like a lot of people have. It's, you know, you could have charge anxiety. You don't know if there's going to be a charger. You don't know how to gauge your range. Sometimes it'll tell you I've got 150 miles, but it's not really 150 miles. And your anxiety levels can go up, whether you're in an urban area with apartments or rural area, and maybe you can't charge at home. There's like a lot of concern with right. that. And in Michigan, to their credit, you know, sort of the birthplace of the car uh, is trying to eliminate that completely. I think for a lot of people who are thinking about getting EVs, you just have to get over that initial anxiety. And once you've sort of done it once, it becomes a relatively non-issue. So this road trip was relatively easy. Uh, it was pretty simple to find chargers. Uh, we found Electrify America at a Walmart. It worked perfectly. So we used PlugShare, we were able to find chargers absolutely anywhere we went. So we got to Grand Rapids, uh, checked into the hotel, rented some Lime scooters and really explored the city. I've never been to Grand Rapids before either. Saw some local landmarks like this Blue Bridge. And of course we had to go check out the Michigan State Satellite Campus. Went to the Grand Rapids Art Museum. Sort of ended it in Beer City, which the name alone was enough to get me there, able just to unwind. We're able to drive from, you know, one side of the state to the other super easily in an EV with sort of zero shortage of charging stations. 
zero charge anxiety, and just stopped whenever I really need to use the restroom or go in for an obscene amount of candy. It made a road trip very simple and very easy. And as EVs are getting better, as charging infrastructure is improving, as they can charge faster, as battery packs are getting bigger, uh, driving an EV is not gonna be something you have to give any reservation or thought to at all. It's just a car and you wanna go somewhere. Uh, it was a really simple process. I wanna think if people are considering getting EVs, worry about. And I think the only way to get over that is to actually to try it or to talk to somebody who's done it where you are going. And through the state of Michigan, it was no problem at all. Detroit is probably the best known uh, city in the state of Michigan, but Ann Arbor must be pretty close. It's obviously the home of University of Michigan. It's about a two and a half hour drive from where we were in Grand Rapids. And there, there are some incredible things happening when it comes to the future of automobiles. And of course, the University of Michigan is involved and it's called M-City. They created a 32 acre outdoor lab made of real roads, traffic lights, it has automated driving before they hit real streets. And they're testing everything from strange looking robot uh, kids on skateboards coming out to possessed looking deer turning their heads, how these cars would perform in overpasses when signal gets blocked, different surfaces, all there to testing data for autonomous vehicles before they ultimately can hit the road. And it's a pretty cool thing to actually see all this happening. There's a lot of different approaches to autonomy depending on who you ask, what company you talk to. But I think the one thing every company can agree on is they have to be tested. And these cars have to be on roads to get that data. And M-City is a huge step towards getting that real world information to ultimately getting autonomous cars on the roads. Uh, and speaking of roads, uh, not all roads are created equal there. So there's a test road in development that'll be there. It's actually going to have inductive charging built into the road so compatible cars can actually just charge as they're driving. I don't know what the kilowatts they can be or how much range you can actually get from that. The idea if you're on the road anyway and your car is enabled, you can get electricity as you're driving uh, is a tremendous step to reducing any charge anxiety people might have or people who are concerned about any sort of those EV roadblocks. Being able to just charge your car as you're driving it. And obviously if you have a car that's not enabled, it's not gonna do anything to your car at all. It's not gonna heat it up or do something strange. If this idea does work, if ultimately it comes to fruition, car makers are supporting it, obviously the place for it to roll out would be where a lot of these cars are built. And that would be the state of Michigan and in Detroit. So Michigan is hoping that all of this can create the same boom for the EV space as they did for internal combustion automotive space. So that was our trip throughout the state of Michigan. It had been a long time since I was there and to sort of see the changes over that time was awesome. To sort of feel the passion that people have for the city, to realize how historic it was and sort of where the birthplace of transportation came to be uh, was infectious. And it was, it was awesome to sort of see these things as they were happening, to be at grand openings, to see this technology as being developed in real time. Somebody who's been driving EVs for 10 years, uh, it was awesome. And it reminded me that that is where transportation is headed. It might not be today or tomorrow or five or 10 years from now, but ultimately we are going electric. And the state of Michigan, the city of Detroit is leading that charge.